Hi guys, my name is Kaylee. Um, this is actually my first YouTube video, so don't be too hard on me, if anyone's even watching it. Um, please excuse the cameraing. I'm not really sure how to use the camera yet. I'm still playing around with it. Um, but hopefully this will be the first of several YouTube videos about sewing and different tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that might help other people out. Um, I've been sewing for a really long time probably most of my life. Um, I'm 27, so I think I got my first machine when I was like six or seven years old, and I've just kind of grew from there. Um, this video is going to be about zippers, and it's not really how to sew a zipper in. I'll make another video about that. It's just different, you know, how to make your own zipper to your own length. Um, when you buy zippers in the fabric store, they usually have their own section. Um, then you go in that little display and you look and they come in different lengths um, and they come in little packets like this as you can see like this one here is 18 inches this one's 14 this one's 16 and they come in all different colors too um, and this is just a regular zipper style as opposed to an invisible zipper um, invisible zippers are a little bit different I'll talk about those in another video hopefully if you guys end up watching my videos um, but they're sewn in differently and they have different applications. Um, but for today, it's just regular zippers. Um, usually zippers come in like all different colors too. It's not just white. Um, like this one here is, I believe 24 inches long and it's meant for like the back of a dress and the same way, just use like a regular zipper, but it just goes the entire length of the back so the dress can fit snugly. Um, I'm not bashing these zippers. I mean, they, you can use them if you're new to zip, if you're new to sewing, new to zippering. Um, I am not a fan of them because if I'm sewing a project and I purchased a 22 inch zipper and I find myself only using 18 inches of it, you have to cut it, sew the bottom together, and it's kind of pointless that you spend extra money on buying a pre-made zipper when you're doing all the work and closing the zipper yourself anyways. Um, I mean, these aren't pricey. I mean, if you're using a lot of zippers, they can get pricey. Um, they probably run anywhere between like $3.50 to $8, depending on the length of the zipper. They make waterproof zippers for like neoprene wetsuits. Those I think are a little bit more expensive. Um, and then they have upholstery strength, they have decorative zippers. Um, I use most of my zippers for pillows and stuff around the house. So I really don't need the neoprene scuba zipper. I just need like an upholstery zipper. So what I do, instead of using these, um, I go out and I purchase this. And this can look a little scary. Um, it usually comes with 15 yards of zipping cord. Ta-da! Okay, and it comes in a roll. Let me roll it up for you. And at the end of the roll, it comes with all these little zipper heads. And that's obviously what's used to move this, to zip up whatever you're making. Um, this can be really scary at first. I showed my mom this and she got really overwhelmed thinking, oh my God, how am I gonna use all the zipper heads? That's not the case. Um, you just, you just scroll these down. I call it scrolling down. It's, you just zip them down. Um, and it's pretty easy. Just zip, zip, obviously easier than that one. I don't know what that one's, there we go. You just move them down. I really like making zippers this way because if I'm working on a you know, a 26 inch bolster, I can actually cut the zipper to the length that I want and it works really well every time. Um, and I think personally these zippers are a little bit stronger than these, but that's just my personal preference. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a custom length zipper, how to close it up on both sides so you don't have a zipper mishap and have the little zip head go flying off and never be able to reattach it because I'm sure you've done that before to a jacket and it's really frustrating. So what I'm gonna teach you today is gonna prevent that. So what you're gonna need are these. 
Um, you can purchase these on Amazon. I believe they're like eight bucks on Amazon for 15 yards and it comes with like 35 different zipper heads. Um, maybe it's like $3 shipping, but that's the best price I found for it. There are other online sewing suppliers that you can purchase them from in different colors. Um, I think they're the same quality. I don't know. I have, I've only ordered from Amazon and bought them from Joanne Fabrics. Um, so you're going to need one of these. There we go. And you're also going to need some clear nail polish. Um, this is just Sally Hansen Instant Dry Fast Color Nail Polish. I use clear. Um, it's just easier for me because it doesn't matter what color zipper I'm working on. Clear just kind of blends in, whatever. It's a little bit pink because I painted my nails with it the other night, so I'm sorry. But normally it's just clear, and I like the Insta Dry because it does dry, I believe, faster. Um, and it has a nice finish, you don't really see it. And you also probably need a sewing machine. Um, I'll take you guys over to my sewing machine in a little bit and some thread. Um, when I sew this up for you guys, I'm going to be using black thread so you can see where I'll be stitching and what kinds of stitches I'll be using. Um, I'm going to be using my older machine, so bear with me. It's actually really old. I think it's from the early 90s. It's just one of my several machines. But um, I like this machine because it's there's it's no there's nothing fancy about it. It just it works every time. Um, to select the stitches, you actually use like an old card. Let me show you. <laughs> it has like these little cards and. It came with like four of them and you put these in and you select the stitch that you want. Um, but the two stitches we'll be using are, see the really wide satin stitch? This one here. Oh, excuse my nails. I haven't gotten them done in a while and they look like crap. Don't judge me. <laughs> um, the really wide satin stitch here, that's going to be used to close the zipper on the bottom. And then the medium size satin stitch is going to be used for the two little tails to close those. Um, and that's it. So we're going to be moving over to the sewing machine and we'll take it from there. All right, everybody, welcome to part two. Um, so as you can see, I have my roll of zippers in front of me. What I've done is I've scrolled all the zipper heads but one. See, this is the one lone zipper head on the bottom. Leave that there. Scroll all of them to the other end. Um, I'm going to be making a, let's do a seven inch zipper. So what I like to do personally is leave an inch on either side. So an inch here and an inch on the end. So seven plus two is nine. Um, so I'm going to cut this to a total of nine inches long. There we go. And right now you're wondering, well, how does the zipper move? I don't know how it does, but it, it just does on this. Um, just be careful that you don't scroll it all the way to one end or the other because you will scroll the zipper off and it will be a pain in the butt to reattach. Um, so onward to the machine. Um, you know, before we go there, we should probably mark where we're going to be sewing our little satin stitches. Let me grab a pen. Um, this is just a pictogram pen. And what it is, it's air soluble. So you'll mark it and it'll disappear in a few minutes. Um, these are great, except when you're marking an entire quilt. I didn't realize, I thought it was just water soluble and I marked out an entire quilt. And the next morning, everything I marked was gone. Um, so just keep that in mind. So for doing quick stuff like this, these pens are great. We're gonna mark an inch from either end. So one inch here and one inch here. So you got two lines. All right. Yep, line one, line two. Um, let's go over to the machine. Okay. There we go. I don't want to make you guys car sick by moving my camera too much. I'm waiting for it to focus. Oh, it's falling off. That's why it's not focusing. 
Okay, so remember I showed you the two stitches that we were using before, um, the really wide satin and the medium sized satin. So the first one I'm doing is the really wide satin. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna move the zipper head to the top here. So I'm gonna be working on this one first. Um, I'm gonna be sewing with black thread so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so you put this underneath the presser foot and you just match the needle up right to where that line is. I'll move this a little bit closer so you can see. You just match the needle to where that line is and you put the presser foot down. Um, I have mine set so the needle goes down when I put the presser foot down. So I don't, a lot of machines don't do that. Um, I don't know if yours will. Come on, focus. There we go, it's focused. Okay, so I'm right on the line, and what I'm gonna do, I have the wide satin stitch selected and the fix. The fix just locks everything in place. Um, I'm gonna fix it in place, and then I'm just gonna hold this end of the zipper and the front end so it can't really move with the feed dogs moving it. Um, just kinda hold it in place and use that wide zipper. Probably hold it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds. And then lock it in place again. Press your foot up, pull everything out. Um, at this point, I like snipping my threads just because I'm anal and I don't like loose threads hanging around. They get caught in zippers and they just make things annoying. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Now we're gonna be doing the two top ones. Um, so we're gonna be selecting that medium satin stitch. There we go, back to the machine. And what we're also gonna be doing is putting, pulling the zipper up and then moving it down to where we created the blockage. Um, the zipper isn't gonna be moving past that because we told it not to. Okay, so I've selected the medium satin stitch. I'm going to go to where my line is. All right, and I have the fix selected as well, so it's going to lock it in place. And same thing, seven seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lock it in place just so it doesn't come undone. Press your foot up, pull everything out. Um, when you do this, you want to make sure that the satin stitch goes over the little plastic teeth. Um, what that does, it creates a blockage so the zipper can't be pulled past it. And we're going to do this for the other side as well. So go to the other, the marked line across, press the foot down, put the little... <laughs> it's an old machine, so sometimes it acts funny. Um, we're going to select the medium satin stitch. We have the fix on to lock it in place again. And same thing, um, just remember to also, like the bottom part, hold the back tail in place so that the feed dogs don't glide along. We don't want it to do that. We want it to kind of overlap each stitch. Okay, so seven seconds, ready, go. All right, lock it in place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was a quick seven, but I held the foot pedal down faster, so whatever. All right, lock it in place. Good to go, and we're going to pull it out and snip the threads. And that's what the top will look like. All right, guys, so now that we have the little blockages sewn on our zipper. See the two toward the top and the one big one on the bottom. Um, what that does is you pull the zipper down, it's not going anywhere. You pull the zipper up, it's not going anywhere. So next step will be involving the nail polish. Um, I know the nail polish is kind of random, but I like it. It just gets rid of these little fray things on the top. I'm a perfectionist and I don't like that. If you're putting so much effort into sewing something, you shouldn't be disappointed by having stupid little fray things hanging out in your outfit. 
Um, it's pretty straightforward. What I do, you just, I'm not going to tell you how to open a nail polish bottle. I'm sure you know how. Um, you open up the nail polish bottle. Easier said than done. Okay, and I make sure, you know, a fair amount of nail polish is on the brush. Okay, and then I just brush it in place. Um, what this does, it prevents future fraying of that area, and it just kind of, I don't know, it adds an extra layer of protection um, so it doesn't fray. I mean, that, that's really the only purpose of it. So I've done one side, and let me do the other. Okay, and now the bottom. Same thing, except it's just bigger because it's two of them together. And what you can also do is if you have little frays already, um, you can just snip them off. So doing this part's a little bit easier, which I'll show you right now. Um, as you can see, there are some little frays. We're just gonna chop them off so it's nice and smooth. Don't be afraid to cut the plastic zipper part. It's actually easier to cut um, than it looks. So let's get the nail polish back and we're gonna apply it. Okay. Now I give it like 10 minutes to dry because this is the quick dry, but I mean, if you sewed with it now, it would kind of gum up everything on your sewing machine, which isn't a good thing. Sewing machines are usually expensive. So just wait the 10 minutes, let it dry, and then you're good to go. Um, so I'm going to be having this hang out for 10 minutes, but that's how you make your own zipper to your own length. Um, thank you for watching my video. I hope you guys liked it, and there'll be more, hopefully. Um, so get cracking. Bye.